Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... Dead Men Prowl, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder... Come with me. Three men have been killed in the tiny isolated village of Holman, across the bay from San Francisco. Three killed and a corpse on the prowl. The corpse of one of the dead men. For at least two people have seen Doc Sims prowling about the street after his body was carried to the morgue. Dr. Jamie Croft had gone to Holman as a weekend guest of Captain Friday. On the beach, they had found Holman's mayor coroner, Doc Sims, dead. At the morgue, they found the village halfwit, Rich Hartley, on the marble slab, shot through the heart. And finally, Andres and Carmel Ruiz, cousins, had found their uncle, Andrew Walters, hanged in his home. Doc Sims and Walters were the two rich men of Holman. Captain Friday, you take up the story here. Holman had not had a death for 20 years, and three sudden deaths roused my interest. With Dr. Croft, I took Andres and Carmel to my beach cottage. In the middle of the night, a launch docked at the village, and two more people entered the picture. They were Gail Stanley and her brother, Martin, niece and nephew of Doc Sims. They'd been called from their home in Santa Barbara by a telegram announcing Doc Sims' death. But the telegram had been sent while Sims was still alive. There were three bedrooms in Captain Friday's cottage. The two girls were put in one, and suddenly, under their open window, came the strange, terrifying rattling of bones. Carmel thought it was the skeleton. Against the younger girl's warning, Gail Stanley went to the window. Please, oh, please don't go near the window. Please. But Gail refused to heed Carmel. She leaned out. Let go of her throat! Andres! Captain Friday! He's pulling her out of the window! <laughs> Carmel! Carmel, my cousin, have you gone mad? Oh, Andres! The skeleton's got it! It came to my window! Son of perdition, where is everyone? I don't know. Outside the window! Oh, Mike, who was that screaming? <laughs> Dr. Croft! Captain Friday, the skeleton's got Gail! Got Gail Stanley? And dragged her out of the window! Had her by the neck. My word. Come with me, doctor. You got a gun? I'll get along very nicely. Andres, watch after your cousin. See, si, senor. Uh, here we are. Uh, Gail Stanley's gone, all right. And pulled her out of the window. Captain, let's go through the window. He or it can't get very far carrying a 110-pound girl. Uh, yeah. The yeah, moon's still good. Should be able to follow. Easy now. I'm down, Captain. Come on. Stand to one side. Uh, there. You see anything, Dr. Croft? Not a soul in sight. Now be careful where you step, Doctor. There'll be footprints. Right. I don't see any. Oh, yeah, yeah, here they are. Which way? Seem to lead around the house and up on the grass, out of the sand. I see. Hmm. You have a match, Captain? Yeah, better than that. A flashlight. Right. Hmm. You notice anything about these footprints, Captain? Hmm. I'll be a son of a gun. Nobody carrying a girl in his arms would make that sort of a track. Not likely. But what did he do with her? Might have dumped her in the ocean. Well, in that case, the tracks would lead to the edge of the surf. Well, let's have a look. He could have strangled her and thrown her in. And that would be the end of Gail Stanley. And the tide's right, too, to carry her out to sea. No tracks going down to the ocean. Just a minute, Captain. Girl kidnapped from my own house and murdered. A fine reputation I'll have. Captain. Captain Friday. Hmm? Here. Here, right under the window. Get down and dig. Dig sand like you've never dug before. You gone nuts. Captain, if you value a human life... What's that? You mean the girl's buried here? Oh, no, faster, man, faster. She can't be buried very deep. Yeah. Couldn't have had much time. Ah, diabolical. Here. Here she is. I've uncovered her feet. Oh, keep at it. Her head's where you're digging. Yeah. Yeah, give me a hand. Ghastly. Oh, the poor child. Don't stop to sympathize. Get the sand off her body. right -o. Is she dead? Well, I don't know yet. There. I think we can pull her out. Yeah. Easy, easy. Careful now. Careful. There. Now, now, lay her down. I want to see about her heart. 
What's the verdict? Oh, splendid. Her heart's still beating strong. Her respiration's weak. Buried her alive. Of all the terror. Now, I'm going to give her a few artificial respiration measures to force the air out of her lungs. Watch closely how I do it so that you can believe me if it takes longer than I think. Now, one, two, one, two, one, two. See, Captain Friday? Press, release. Press, release. Forces the air out. The lungs automatically refill with fresh air. It's a crude first aid method, but it's working. Lucky we found it when we did. Another ten minutes. It would have been too late. Wet sand packed around her face. Well, that's one up for you, Doctor. I can't figure out yet how you knew she was buried there. The fact that the man didn't carry her away was the first tip. And I noticed that wet, pyramid-like stain against the side of the house. <clears throat> Evidently, this amateur grave digger threw the sand against the house. Yeah, I missed it altogether. <laughs> Fine detective I turned out to be. Well, what next? Then I noticed the sand had been disturbed. <sighs> we can be thankful the sand was wet. Well, that's smart work, Doctor. I've got to hand it to you. How's the girl? <sighs> Doing well. It's going to be all right. Look here. Look here, have you got my sister out there? Is that you, Stanley? Yes. Where are you? Leaning out of the window right above you. Is that Gail? Yeah, what about it? What's the matter with her? What are you doing to her? Supposing you climb out the window and find out. No. You can do better than that. Go and tell Carmel and Andres to put a, cop a pot of coffee on. She'll need something hot. But see here, what's the matter? Do as you're told, fella. But first, toss a blanket out of the window. We're bringing her in now. Here, Stanley, we want a blanket. I heard. And do what you're told and hurry. Well, you don't need to snap my head off. She's breathing regularly now. It's going to be all right. Here's the blanket. Catch her. All right. I'll go tell Carmel and Andres. Hadn't I better help? Say, listen here, Stanley. Oh, all right, all right. Kind of a dump this. Spread the blanket out and help me lift the girl onto it. Okay. How's that? Good. Take her legs. Well, there's plenty of hot water, I suppose. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll want to get hot backs on her. She's thoroughly chilled, poor child. There. That'll do. Now, can we carry her together? I can carry her along. Up with it. We'll go around and come in the front door. Well, have it your own way. I'll go ahead with the flash. Okay, you lead the way. Yeah, that poor kid. Well, keep away from those footprints, Doctor. I want to give him a closer look in the morning. Good idea, Captain. Look here. I think we'd better reassign rooms for the rest of the night. Neither of the girls will be willing to go back to their room. Uh, don't blame them. Well, naturally. Supposing, then, you and I take the girls' room. We'll let Andres and young Stanley get along as best they can, and we'll put Carmel and Gail in my room. The windows are high and small. No one likely to get in them unnoticed. We can lock the door into the hallway, and the door opening between the two bedrooms will be an added protection for them in case of emergency. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Can you get in the door with her? Yeah. Get in sideways. All right. Easy. There you are. Good. I've got the fire built up. Here, here. Uh, lay her on the lounge. Uh, there. Yeah. Everyone must be out in the kitchen. Andres! Come out! Captain Friday! Come here, quick! Quick! What now? Stay with the girl, Doctor. All right. Kill you! Up here, here, here. Fire. What's going on? Captain, make them stop fighting. Make them stop. Stop fighting. Here, you two. What's this about? Help the Kill this person. Oh, you will, will you? Well, that black eye is just a tiger. Ah, take it easy, Stanley. As if we didn't have enough trouble without all... There's a reason for all this rumpus. There is reason plenty. It's me. Oh, you, huh? <laughs> Please, Captain Friday, it's not funny. Well, but see here, Carmel... Male attention is meat and drink to most girls. See, but, Captain, this Stanley person insult my cousin. Insult, huh? What are you up to, Stanley? Is it an insult to admire a girl? Yeah, but with the look you give her. Hands off, Stanley. Do you admiring from a distance? Matter of fact, you might be showing a little more concern about your sister. You said she was all right. Go on in the front room. I'll bring the hot water. Dr. Croft is with your sister. Please, Captain Friday, may I wait for you? Well, if you like. 
You two go on and give the doctor a hand. Yeah, okay, have it your own way. Please, get them Friday. Well? What did you mean about... about men being meat and drink to most girls? Out of the convent and into the fire. What? See here, Carmel. You've got to expect a certain amount of attention. You've been shut off from the world. Now you're out in it. One of these days, you'll want to marry. Won't you? Why, yes. Hmm? Of course. Well, you've got to have men around you. Otherwise, how are you to know which man you'll want to marry? Oh. Yeah. And if you're a wise child, you'll be amused by the attention. You'll be very diplomatic. Appease all of them. Keep the friendship of all of them until you discover which is the one you want. But, but how does the girl tell which one she wants? <laughs> Don't worry, you'll know. It's automatic. But um, take my advice and see if you can't keep those two young Romeos from each other's throats. Try it. I've got a hunch you have a knack for diplomacy. Well, I'll try. Now let's go into the other room. Mind now. Run into any trouble, you come to me. Hi, Stanley. Call Captain Friday. Your sister's coming too. Coming too, huh? All right, Doctor, we'll take care of her. It took you a long time to get that hot water, Captain. <laughs> Had to settle an international dispute. Uh, see here, Miss Stanley's pajamas are wet from the sand. She must have something dry. Carmel, get some fresh pajamas out of her bag. Oh, uh, Andres. See, si. You go along with her. Hurry now. Assuredly. Come, my cousin. Captain, will you wring out a cloth in this hot water, please? Bathe her face and arms. The pulse is good. And respiration's normal. Are you going to be okay, Doctor? Oh, no doubt about it. You see how the color's coming into her face? It's better if we can get her into dry things before she comes to. We found another pair of pajamas in the bathrobe. Will they do? Nicely. Now then, Captain, you and the two young men clear out for a few minutes. Uh, Carmel, you stay here. Yes, sir. Stanley. Oh, we're going to have Miss Stanley back with us any moment now. Doctor, will, will she cry? Cry? Oh, I don't think so. But she'll be very ill. She's had a terrible experience. Hmm. Gail never cries about anything. She was very near the brink of death. Persons returning from so near the edge are apt to be filled with a terrible horror. Oh, Sadie, go away. Look. Look the expression on her face. Oh, she's terribly afraid. What's the matter with her, Doctor? You said my sister'd be all right. You said she'd be all right. What's the matter with her? What have you done to her? Easy, Stanley. What have you done to my sister? What have you done to her? Gail Stanley is alive, but she's a very sick young woman. Choked and dragged out of her bedroom window by the skeleton and left lying on the wet sand for dead is an experience out of a nightmare. When she began to come to, her mental horror was so terrifying, she frightened her brother almost to the point of hysteria. Something's happened to her. Gail never cries. What have you done to her? You think something is wrong with her, eh? You know she was dragged from her bedroom window by some creature and was bedded alive in the wet sand, and you stand there asking, is something wrong with her? Is... is she insane? Insane. What kind of a guy are you, Stanley? Well, I never saw my sister act like that before. You don't seem to understand. It is terrible to approach death, but not one half so terrible as to return to life after you have once looked on the other side. You, you mean she'll know what dying's like when she comes to? Perhaps. Don't you see all the delicate machinery of her body came almost to a standstill? It was a terrible strain on her system, getting it started again. <laughs> Captain Friday, can you carry her again? Sure, Doctor. Why? Well, bring her back to the room she's to occupy. Now, uh, you two men, gather up all the extra blankets you can find and heat them one at a time before the fire and bring them to me. Most okay, assured, right away. See. Uh, Carmel, see if you can't find a hot water bottle. Fill it and bring it. Yes, sir. Now then, Captain, bring her along. There now. Easy there. There we are. Same. My sister must be pretty sick. Is that as bad as you feel? Oh, let me alone. 
Look here, Andres. Uh, I'll hunt around for blankets and you warm them and take them into the doctor. Here's one. No, uh, very well, if you wish. Andres, I... There is a hot water bag in the bathroom. It hangs behind the door. I saw it. Do you think it's safe for me? Come on, I'll go with you together. No. I think she's safer alone. Oh, you do, do you? Well, I... I... (laughs) Don't be so dramatic, Andres. Of course, Mr. Stanley will look out for me. Please do come. You want me to come? Of course. But, Carmel, Please, uh, let's hurry. Dr. Croft wants the bag right away. How am I doing, Cousin Andres? Here it is. I'll have to get hot water in the kitchen. Okay. You'd better look for more blankets, Mr. Stanley. I won't be afraid in the kitchen. I... Oh, please. Ah, don't act like that. But you're hurting me. So tight. Don't... <laughs> you are pretty. If I thought you weren't a gentleman, I... Say, you asked me to come along, didn't you? Because I was afraid. You know, I could call for help. Why don't you? Because I'd feel sorry for what would happen to you. Oh, Haven't you that much consideration for me? You're growing up in a hurry. You don't sound like the frightened baby I tried to kiss out in the kitchen less than an hour ago. If you'll take your hands off of me. Thank you. Now go and find more blankets. Well, I'll be doggone. All right, you win. You're sure you're not afraid to go back alone? Please, you'll wait here until I get down the hall? All right, I'll watch until you're safe. Oh, there you are. Yes. I was just getting ready to come and look for you. That would have been foolish, Andres. Oh, I see you have the hot water bottle. Uh, Shall I go to the kitchen with you? If you keep talking, I won't be afraid. See. Uh, I've taken two blankets into the doctor. Miss Stanley, she stopped crying now. The doctor, he give her something. She's talking with them. Do you hear me, Carmel? Yes. Please keep talking. Huh? Well, the doctor is giving her medicine to make her sleep. He says uh, these hot blankets will make her drowsy. The... Oh. oh, you have it filled already, huh? Good. Well, I have another blanket ready. We will go together, eh? I wish you would come with me, Andres. Carmel, did this Stanley fellow, did he bother you? Why, what a silly question. Because if he did... Please, don't bother your head about it. Then he did. Mr. Stanley was a gentleman, Andres. Uh, well, then it was an accident. Here, they have put Miss Stanley in here. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. And as I leaned out of the window, two strong hands grabbed me around the throat. Well, didn't you see the face? Just for a second. It sort of swam before my eyes. I was being choked and... Anybody you ever saw before? No. No, I couldn't tell. It wasn't like a normal face. It was all puffed out, almost round. And the eyes, the eyes were dead. Oh, here, here, Miss Stanley. Take another sip of this. It will help you to forget. Dead eyes, bloated face. Nobody in Holman of that description. No one answering the description of the skeleton Carmel and Andres saw either, is there? Kelly, is there anything else you saw, Miss Stanley? Yes. Something so, so awful, I can't believe I saw it. Yeah? There was a rope around his neck. It was tied around his neck and hanging down in front of him. (gasps) My uncle! My uncle! Come out. Don't you dare faint. Me. You're much better off slapped than in a faint. Please, Carmel, you sit down. See? No, 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 no. You stand up. Walk about. Keep moving. You'll be all right in a moment. Bloated face, dead eyes, a rope around his neck. And Andrew Walters was found hanged tonight. Now look here, Doctor, that can't be true. What can't be true? I'll swear Walters was dead when we found him. I know he was. Then what's he doing walking around? We saw Doc Sims walking around. Oh, I must be going nuts. And one dead man has as much right to walk around as another. Do you know what you're talking about? No. Do you? I know one thing. I'm going over to the morgue right now. If Walters has been walking around... Oh, oh, come, Captain. You don't really believe... Well, if Miss Stanley... Hey, look here, Miss Stanley. Are you... Sir... Oh, sleep. Yes. I gave her a pretty severe sleeping potion. She'll sleep until morning. Well, I'm going over to the morgue. You want to come along? No, I think I'd best stay here. It's only about a block. No. Now, you take Andres. Where's young Stanley? Yeah, where's that guy? Either of you seen him? Why, well, I left him gathering up blankets about ten minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, just a minute. 
What's he up to? Carmel? Yes, sir. Carmel, as soon as the captain is gone, I want you to get into this other bed. Oh, but I couldn't sleep. I couldn't. Yes, yes, yes. You'll sleep all right. I'll see to that. Supposing... Supposing someone should... should get in while we're asleep. No one will get in. We lock all the doors, and one of the boys will be here with me. We'll keep a lookout. Oh, yeah? Maybe you were, and maybe you weren't. Go on in here. Don't try to manhandle me. I don't care who you are. Here, here, you're not so loud, Stanley. Can't you see your sister sleeping? I was in my room getting a blanket, and this fellow jumped on me and began pushing me around. Getting a blanket, huh? Didn't think I saw you stick this revolver down under the covers, did you? That's my gun. Yeah, sure. That's what I'm telling you. What you doing with it? I just got it out of my grip for protection. Yeah? And why did you hide it when I came in? A person ought to be able to protect himself without letting the whole world in on it. Yeah? Give it back to me. Okay, baby. I'll be mighty careful what I did with it. Now then, Doctor, I'm going over to the morgue. Andres will go with me. If you wish. All right then, Stanley. You stay here with me. Come along, Andres. Get your hat. Uh, Dr. Croft, you... You will look after my little cousin. Oh, don't worry. She'll be safe and sound asleep when you return. Ready, Andres? Uh, I am coming, see. Si. Good night, Carmen. Be careful, Andres. Be careful, please. Oh, you must not worry for me. Good night. All right, let's step on it. Still moonlight. See, si. it does not seem possible this is the same night we first met. So much has happened. <laughs> Doesn't it that? Now look here, Andres. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Here we can take this path across the lot. It's shorter. See. Si. Well, what is it you wish to ask? You were, as far as we know, the last to see your Uncle Andrew alive. I do not know that. I was with him just before I left to meet Carmel at the train. Yeah, that's what I mean. Andres, what frame of mind was he in when you left? Oh, very much interest in uh, what Carmel would be like. We talked for almost an hour, making plans. Yeah. It's not a suicidal frame of mind. Oh, no, no, senor. I am sure he did not contemplate suicide. No, it was not possible. Yet who would murder a man by hanging him? And what man would stand around and let himself be hanged? Hmm? If he were unconscious before... Captain Friday, look! A body. Is someone else dead? There's only one way of finding out. See? He is sprawled out. It's Doc Sims' body. El Diablo! The dead man who we see. Still wrapped up in his sheet. Here. Andres, help me turn him on his back. Is his heart go? <sighs> no. But we see him walking. Well, you can tell by looking at his face that he's dead. Oh. This is most horrible thing. Well, come on, there's nothing to do but take him back to the morgue. Senor, you wish Only me. A couple to... of steps, but. Yeah. Grab a hold of his legs. Oh, I do not like these. Yeah. Maybe you think I do. Uh, grab hold. Uh, ready? Mm, si. All right, let's go. Yeah. We'll put him in the morgue. Here, hang on. Don't let him slip. I have not let him slip. Well, he moved. Uh, we'll put him in the morgue and have Doc Croft come down and give him another an examination. Not much use, though. I know a dead man when I see one. Oh, this is bad thing. Yeah, this is the place. Lower him to the porch while I unlock the door. See? Well, I'll be. The door's unlocked. And I locked it sure as I'm a foot high. Senor, you think someone else has been here? The door didn't unlock itself. Come on, let's carry him in. Where will we take him? Right straight through to the inner room where the other bodies are. Oh, please. Please, I would rather not look at him if you do not mind. Okay, look the other way. But you'll have to help me get Doc Sims in. Well, if it is necessary. Yeah. You're right in here. See, si. Careful. And now then, lay him on the floor while I turn on the lights. Oh, before you turn on the lights, I will go out. Wait for me outside the door. For sure, senor. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. You call, Captain? Andres. Andres, the half-wit boy's body is gone. It was here on the slab. Senor! Senor, you think maybe he is walking? Look. Look at your uncle's shoes, Andres. Wet sand on them. The rope around his neck. Fellow, I'm beginning to think dead men do walk.
body of the village half-wit boy is gone, and the shoes on the corpse of Andrew Walters covered with wet sand. Here is evidence that the dead may rise and go about their morbid duties. You will hear the fourth episode of Dead Men Prowl, entitled Conversation with the Walking Dead, next week at this same hour. You are listening to Adventures by Morse.